Noob's Guide to Spoilers and Wings, you're probably guilty of interchangeably using those two words. The main difference between spoilers and wings are how they appear as well as their functionality. Spoilers are smaller, they follow the vehicle's lines, and they're designed to spoil airflow, hence the name spoiler. A wing is massive, extends beyond the shape of the vehicle, and is focused on creating downforce to keep all the car's tires planted when cornering at high speeds. A spoiler has the goal of keeping rear wheels planted under hard acceleration, mostly by reducing rear end lift, which makes them ideal on fast rear wheel drive cars or all wheel drive cars with a rear power bias. A wing will serve purpose on any car, no matter the drivetrain, as long as the car is in need of downforce for cornering. So stop calling track built Civics ricers for having wings, cause her dear, they're front wheel drive and they don't need them. Yes, front wheel drive cars can indeed benefit from wings, so they do still need them. Do note that a wing is not optimal for straight line speed, regardless of any car it's on, and oftentimes it's going to create way too much drag. That's why cars like Viper ACRs, Corvette ZR1s, and most Formula cars are more about cornering. If you want to break down the actual science behind each design, you'll see a spoiler, if made correctly, will create a pocket of stagnant air. This is because the spoiler is redirecting the air away from it. A spoiler that's doing its job should have air evenly flow over it, not have it expand towards the rear. Here's a side-by-side -side picture to illustrate my point. Types of spoilers. Now, do note that different vehicles make use of different spoilers, and there's no one-size-fits-all, and also remember that at the end of the day, people, as well as manufacturers, will still apply ones based on appearance and not functionality. But if you're going to get it wrong anyway, at least a bad spoiler isn't as negatively effective as a bad wing. The most common spoiler is the lip spoiler. It gets its name from how it gently hugs around the rear lip of your vehicle and just protrudes ever so slightly outward. A ducktail follows the same principles of a lip spoiler but accentuates the rear lines of your vehicle by coming out just a little more. These spoilers are optimal for drag cars and they add a level of aggression to your design without being overly tryhard and edgy and they get their name from the fact that, well, they look like a duck's tail. Raised decklid spoilers feature a gap between them, and many people think spoilers aren't allowed to have gaps between the vehicle's bodywork and it, but that simply isn't true. As long as it follows the lines of the vehicle and exists more for spoiling airflow instead of creating downforce, it's still a spoiler. Pedestal. The largest of spoilers and oftentimes constantly confused with wings, an example of a pedestal spoiler would be the GT350R. The pedestal gets its name from the fact that the spoiler is propped up like a pedestal. Now again, do note, it follows the lines of the vehicle, it never extends outwards. That is the main difference between a spoiler and wing from a sheer appearance standpoint. So if you're ever confused about functionality, because I know not everyone could just bust out an aero calculator that calculates the airflow of a vehicle, you can always just stand behind them directly to determine that. Now a wing will extend beyond a vehicle's lines. In the same vein that not all spoilers are functional, keep in mind not all wings are either, so make sure the manufacturer you're buying from has actual proof of their aerodynamic yields. If you're doing a track build, I recommend buying a vehicle specific wing, that way it has been properly aerodynamically tested for your specific car. Anything that says universal fit is likely just for cosmetics. One size fits all my ass. This is not a clothing store, this is the complicated aerodynamics of a vehicle we're talking about here. There's no way a single wing can be designed to uniquely contour around every single car in the world. Again, I'm not going to stop you from ricing your car and buying a universal wing. Just know it won't do anything beneficial. In fact, it might actually do the opposite and it may ruin your car's airflow if the wing has an argument against the shape of your vehicle. Unlike spoilers, wings don't have very unique names. They are as follow. Low wing, a low wing, medium wing, a medium wing, high wing, a high wing. I hope I really don't need to elaborate on those, the name more or less says what they are. However, do note that wings aren't just categorized by appearance, the more important categorization is how they mount, and a lot of people get confused by this, so let's explain. Chassis mount, trunk mount, bolt on mount, and tape mount. Give all ears and listen closely if you want to be nice instead of rice. But also if you don't want several thousand dollar components flying off your vehicle and hitting someone behind you, thus gaining a lawsuit that costs several more thousand. Chassis mount is by and far the best way to mount a wing for rigidity, structural integrity, and it's also just the most aerodynamically proven option. Now it does come at a great expense, and I mean a great expense. Chassis mount wings get their names from the fact that they literally mount to your car's chassis. 
The easiest way to get a chassis mount wing is oftentimes to just request it like that from factory. Cars like the Corvette ZR1 can be ordered with a chassis mounted wing, and honestly that's the best time to do a chassis mount since while the car is still under production line, the chassis is still openly exposed. If you already have a fully assembled car, which most of you guys watching this video probably do, but you're thinking about chassis mounting, again, it's going to be more complicated, you're going to have to remove a lot of components and you may have to take it to local professionals or discuss some things with local specialists. Realistically, be prepared to disassemble your car's rear. But trust me, it's going to be worth it. I mean, it better, you paid several grand after all. Drill mounting or bolt-on mounting. Bolt-on wings are the most common wings, be it manufacturer or your local riser. Bolt-on wings designed specifically for your car can make adequate levels of downforce and provide a small boost in rigidity. Be wary as when browsing for bolt-on wings, that's when you'll start to see the dreaded term of universal, one size fits all. And now finally onto our final mounting type, tape mounted wings. No, I'm not joking, I wish I were. So we're not going to talk about duct tape ones that risers do, I'm talking about actual, officially advertised wings. There are some companies that take pride in advertising wings, no drilling required, drill free mounting. Alright so just a side note, I, lo I know a lot of drill free mounting things are mostly spoilers and not wings, but what I found really funny is most of them are Chinese companies. So. They, they always say like free drilling, <laughs> like free instead of drill free or no drilling required. I don't know, I found that humorous. Anyways, back to the video. Now this usually appeals to people who are just too lazy or too unskilled to do properly aligned holes or to those who just don't really care much or want to keep their rear immaculate, but here's the thing. In the long run, it's not worth buying these wings and they may cause more damage than a drill mounted one. While 3M can probably keep a lip spoiler on a car for 10 years without ever falling off, a wing is a literal wall that catches air. This means a lot of force is constantly being pressed against it, which inevitably will wear out the tape. You ever see those fail compilations of wings flying off of people's cars? Yeah, those were the tape mounted ones. So please don't be one of those guys. And I know someone's going to be in my comments like, oh, I've had a tape mounted wing for over 7 years now and it's never fallen off. Cool, but we all know you never go over 80 miles an hour in your mom's Corolla, so your experience is invalid. Anyone who's done autocrossing or track racing can assure you that a tape mounted wing is a one way ticket to a lawsuit. Even for cosmetic purposes only, it still isn't worth it. Like I said, just, just get the bolt on wings, they literally cost the same. If you're going to be a ricer, at least be one that's committed to safety still. Anyways, if you want to learn more about cars and car culture, check out the rest of my noobs guide series. If you're curious as to how people react to a weeaboo corvette, check out my recent vlog. Thanks for watching and see y'all next time. Blade Angel out.